All right, we're gonna look at the different options you have with table properties. So right click on your table and choose table properties. This menu over here to the right shows up with row, column, alignment, and color. So let's look at row. So right in here, let's set our minimum row height to, let's just go ahead and set it to one and see what happens. Notice it only changed the, the, this first row because that's where my cursor was. So let's go ahead and control Z to undo that. If you want to change all of the rows, you need to make sure that you highlight all of them. And then we're gonna change this. We're actually gonna make it tinier and go to point two. So you'll look at this and notice that this row right here with the image of the cat did not decrease in size like the rest of them did. And that is because there is an image in there. So if there's an image in there, or perhaps you have a lot of text writing in the box, it obviously cannot go to a smaller size. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is kind of just letting you go ahead and set what you want all of them to be to start, and then as you add content, it will change it. Pin header row, I'm gonna talk about that in a different video, because that has to do with sorting, so definitely check that out in a different video. Let's look at this option, allow row to overflow across pages. So right now, our table is at the bottom of a page. So if I were to, let's go ahead and go into this cell right here. If I were to paste all this content into this cell, notice how part of this row is on this page, and then because there's a lot of text, it rolls over onto the next page. Watch what happens if I uncheck this box. So now I'm basically saying, I don't want to allow the rows to overflow across pages. Even though there's room on the bottom of this page for part of this table to be here, because this content in this row is so long, it automatically moved the entire row to the next page. So that's a great feature to keep in mind if you wanna keep all the content within a row on the same page. All right, so let's go ahead and undo that and we'll come back to this here. So column is same thing. You have the column width if you wanted to set the column width. Like for example, if we wanted to make these two columns uh, skinnier, we could come in here, change this down, let's just go one. So notice it went ahead and it changed just the size of these two columns. Table alignment, right now our table alignment is to the left, so you can see we have a lot of extra space over here to the right. Perhaps we want to center the table. So if we choose this, now you'll notice that it is centered on the table and we can also move it over to the right. One other option you have if it's to the left is you can come down here and choose how far you want it to be indented on the page. So you can see if we chose two inches, it almost moved it all the way over to the right. So maybe you just wanna go 0.5 to give a little bit of extra room over here. Now we're gonna look at cell padding. That has to do with the amount of space inside your cell. So if we look at Wednesday, it doesn't fit on one line. We could manually change the width of this um, column, but we want these columns to be the same. So we're gonna highlight these cells because they're the ones we wanna change, and we're gonna change this to 0 0.02. So we have less padding. So you can see what that did is Wednesday now fits, but there's hardly any blank space between the lines and the word itself. It brought everything a lot closer. Let me undo that so you can watch the difference. So notice how there's more spacing everywhere with this 0 0.069. So that is cell padding. Now let's look at our color options. Okay, table border. Let's come in here. I'm not gonna select cells. I'm just gonna put my cursor in any cell here. We'll just put it in the top cell. When I come in here to change table border, I'm gonna change it to red. Notice it changes the entire table. Even if I were to select just this row and change it to blue, Again, it changes the entire table border. So it's very different than how row and columns are. Same thing with cell background. It works a little different with this compared to table border. I'm gonna put this in my no school is where my cursor is. And if I change the color, notice it changes just that cell. If I wanted to change this entire row, I have to highlight all of them and then it will highlight the entire thing. So table border is the only one that changes every single row and column. If you did wanna change just one row, that's gonna be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and close our table properties. This time we're gonna go ahead and select the entire row here. I come up, if you don't see this option, click on more, 
And then right here, you'll see where this is where your background color is. So let's go ahead and change that to uh, pink. So see it changed all of those. And here's where we can change just those borders. So now you can see it changed just that cell. Maybe I wanna change just this cell here. So I'm gonna put my cursor in there and let's change this one to a bright yellow. So you can see that it changed just this color to the bright yellow. So that's how you can change just individual cells or an entire column or row. So you can also change the, the width. So let's go ahead and choose this one up here. We can come up next to the border color is the border width. So let's go ahead and just make this three and you can see that made all sides much wider. You can come up also, let's select this again and change it to dots, change it to the, to the lines. So you have a lot of different options where you can come in here and make different choices to how you want each of the different cells to be. So definitely play with the different options of table properties to personalize it the way you'd like to.